Computer Programming Essentials Unit 7, Part 2. So one pitfall when we're writing loops is failing to alter the loop control variable within the loop. And we saw an example of this on the previous unit, uh, part, and uh, it causes an infinite loop. And we don't want to have an infinite loop. We probably will write one, and then you'll join the super secret club of infinite loop writers, and, and welcome. Um, we all do it from one time or another, but it's not something that we seek. Uh, so to prevent a while loop from executing infinitely, we must alter the loop control variable inside the loop. Uh, here's an example of where we've not done that. Loop count equals 1, while loop count less than 3. System.println, hello, loop count equals loop count plus 1. And you look at this and you say to yourself, but this works? What's wrong? What's wrong with this statement? If you said it's missing the open and closed curly brace, you are absolutely right. We need to group those two statements together, the system did out dot print line, hello, and the loop count equals loop count plus one, into a code block that will be executed as long as loop count is less than three. So another problem is cre creating a loop with an empty body. We don't typically want to do this. A loop with an empty body is a loop with no statements. And it looks like this. See where it says while loop count less than three semicolon? That semicolon terminates the loop. So it will never execute the loop body. It's an infinite loop. Loop count will always be less than three and it will always keep looping. It won't ever update because of that semicolon. So syntactically that's correct. Java will let you do that and think that's what you want to do, but logically it is not correct and it will cause an infinite loop. So we want to make sure that we alter the loop control variable inside the loop. Um, with a definite loop. This is a count controlled loop. And there are two things, two ways that we can alter it. We can add one or add some fixed value, or we can subtract one or subtract a fixed value. We call this incrementing, that's adding, or decrementing, that's subtracting. Um, and the clearest and best me method is to start the loop control variable at zero or one and add one each time through the loop and stop when the loop control variable reaches a certain limit. For example, loop count equals 3. Well, loop count is greater than 1. So notice that 3 is greater than 1, so we're going to loop. System print hello, loop count equals loop count minus 1. So we're subtracting 1 each time through the loop. And hello will be printed twice, because we start when loop count equals 3. We print hello, loop count becomes 2. 2 is still greater than 1, so we print hello again. Loop count equals loop count minus 1, so loop count becomes 1. 1 is not greater than 1. So we are done, and we've printed hello twice. An indefinite loop is a loop that's, that we don't know how many times it's going to loop. It's not a count-controlled loop. It loops as some value that's determined by the user or controlled by user input, and we don't know exactly how many times when we're writing the code how many times that's going to loop. We typically use write an indefinite loop for validating data, such as entering your password. You might get your password right on the first try, but it might take you a few tries, so you want your program to loop around again and give you another try to enter your password correctly. Uh, if we want to uh, validate data to make sure that the user enters correct data, such as entering correct password, we need to use a priming read. We need to uh, get some initial value that we're going to test the loop control condition against before we loop. And that's called a priming read.